Okay, uh, so let's continue with our class. Let me start my Linux instance. Uh, guys, are you getting recorded videos every day? Everyone? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. Sure. So in yesterday's class, so we have seen some Linux commands and all, right? Yeah. Now, just give me one minute. So in yesterday's class, we were trying to understand how to give path and all, all those things, right? Giving path and all. Uh, that is the most important concept, guys. If you understand that one, that, that means you are good with Linux. Okay. Uh, let me open my PPT. So today we are going to discuss these commands. Okay. There are some commands that you know you can run from anywhere you need not worry about uh, you know from which location that you are running okay like host name see host name means it is your ec2 instance name your computer's name if you want to see the host name of your machine host name means a name okay if you want to see the host name of your machine just directly type host name host name you can see it shows your computer name computer means your ec2 instance name this is not the one that you are using, you have given, no. This is for yourselves. But when you launch any instance, by default, every instance will have one name, that is <coughs> this name. That's what we call host name. If you want to see IP address of your instance, if you want to see IP address, then command is, so we have two to three commands are there. One is, you know, IP config, Sorry, yes. If config, if config, okay. IP config that we run in Windows, if config that we use in Linux. You can see whatever you can see. This is the IP address of your your EC2 instance. Apart from that, you can simply use one more command that is hostname hyphen i. If you give hostname hyphen i, it shows only IP address. Okay, either you can use if config or hostname hyphen i to see. You know IP address. Okay. Now, if you want to see which operating system that you are using, see right now I know that I'm using Amazon Linux, 
But how can you say that mine is Amazon Linux? It could be Red Hat Linux, Ubuntu, because command prompt remains same, right? If you want to see which OS that you are using, that OS related information would be stored in one file. Okay. That file is OS siphon release. Okay, if you want to see OS information, you have to open this file, cat, that is under etc, OS siphon release. Okay, so this file contains OS related information. Since that file is not in my current directory, that is in my under etc, etc is under top level root directory, that's why I am giving the path. Now enter, you can see, right now I am using Amazon Linux. Now you might be thinking, Sai, how do you know that this file is under etc only? Yeah, for that we are going to use find command that we are going to discuss, okay? So right now I'm using Amazon Linux. Sometimes what you can do, if you don't know the full name, we can use star guys. Okay, let me give, see here. I know OS cipher RELE. I don't know after that, something, some word is there, I don't know. We can use star. Star means any file, okay, starting with OS cipher REL. It will open that file. Suppose if you don't know beginning, you can use star. That means it will open any file ending with REL, release, any file. So star means all. Okay. So you can put beginning and ending also. Like, so you can see. Any file having name in between REL, it is going to open that file. Like that. So if you don't know few things, then we can give star. Okay. That also we can use. We use a lot. Uh, coming to packages, guys. See, uh, yeah, let me show you how to install a package. If you want to install, if you want to deal with packages, we use some yum commands. Yum, yellow dog update modifier, yellow dog update modifier, but don't worry, just remember yum commands. These are the commands that we use. Earlier, we used to use RPM commands, earlier, long back, Red Hat Packet Manager, but nowadays, we are using yum commands to deal with packages and services, so packages. If you want to install any package, see here, this is a command we use. Yum install, for example, tree, minus five. Minus five, you know, right? During that time, it should not wait for your permission. That's why minus five. So yum install the package minus five, that is all. It is saying that, hey, already package is there, nothing to do, that means no problem. Suppose if you want to, guys, these shortcuts we discussed yesterday, right? Uh, up arrow, down arrow, all these things, right? Uh, I would like to install a package on HTTP. Okay, so I mean, install HTTP minus five. That is how we install a package. <clears throat> okay. Suppose if you want to update package, assume that whatever package that you install that is older version. So what do you do? M update. Say M update package name. If it are any updates are there, it will take those updates. If updates are not there, then it won't take any updates. Okay. If you want to remove package, then command is yum remove, yum remove, hcpd minus five. These are very simple commands. Okay. Yum remove package name. You can see that is so we can remove. Okay. Now you want to verify whether the package is removed or not. How to verify which command we use, which HTTPD. See here, there is no HTTPD. Tree is there, which tree? Yes, tree is there. Okay, that's all. which command we use to verify whether a particular package is there or not. If you want to see list of all installed packages, all installed packages. For example, let me install HTTPD. See, I have installed HTTPD. I would like to see list of all installed packages. So yum list installed. Yum list. Yum list installed. So this command shows all packages which are installed in your machine. You can see here. Three packages there. HTTP also should be there. You can see HTTP is there. Like it shows all installed packages. Okay. That is how we can do it. See, we use the pipe symbol. 
spiked symbol we got. If if you know if we want to join two commands, for example, command A, command B. If output of first command is going to be input of second command, then we use pipe symbol in between. I'm repeating. When output of first command is going to be input of second command, then we divide by using pipe. Like see here, M list install. When I press enter, it will give list of all packages. From that, see here, pipe pipe symbol means on top of enter key there is a button that you have to type with shift. Pipe grep. See, after running this command, I'll get big list. From that, I'm searching for one particular word. What is the word? HTTPD. After that, there could be some version number is there. I don't remember. That's I'm doing star. See how I'm using multiple commands. After running this command, I'll get big list. From that, I'm looking for one particular word. After that, something is there. I don't remember. That's I'm giving star. Press enter. So you can see it is showing that yes. After HTTPD, you can see so many other things are there. Since we rem don't remember that's why I'm going to stop. So it is showing all lines wherever HTTPD word is. So this is one more way to verify whether package is installed or not. Like tree. Tree package is there or not. You can see yes, tree is there. That is how we can do it. Okay. Uh, see, after installing package, for some package, you need to start service. Like, you know, HTTP, you need to start service. For tree and all, you need not to do it. Now you might be thinking, Sai, how do we know for which package we need to start service or not? That they have mentioned in their official website. HTTP is there. So if you go to that official website, they will mention that, yes, after installing package, you have to start service, something like that. Okay. Uh, yeah, to start service, we use command called either two commands you can use, either uh, <coughs> service commands you can use or system CDL command you can use. System CDL. Okay, so either of those you can use. Okay, if you want to, if I want to start service HTTPD, service HTTPD start. Okay, this is how we use. Even though if you give service command backend, that will redirect to system CTL only. You can see because system CTL commands are pretty latest commands. Okay, so even though if you use service command backend, it will redirect to system CTL. So same install within service. If I have to use system CTL, then command is something like this: system CTL start HTTPD. That means here. Service HTTPD start, system serial start HTTPD. These two words you have to interchange like that. Okay. If you want to verify the status, system serial status. Status HTTPD. You can see, yes, it is active and running. If you want to stop, system serial stop HTTPD. You can see. Or service HTTPD stop something. Now verify the status. System CTL status is shaped inactive and dead. Again, you want to start. See, start issue like that. Like that, we can start. We can we can reload also. We can either you can you restart or reload. See, reload. When we you reload, suppose after upgrading package, what we need to do? We need to restart the service or reload. So that, that's how we can use. Okay. So either service commands or system CTL commands. When you use service, service, package name and start, stop, something we give. But system CTL, here you use stop, start, and up, then package. Just you know, service name. You have to interchange this. Just remember that. Okay. You see, service is running. But if, if I stop my instance, service will be stopped. Again, tomorrow when I start instance, I have to start service manually. To address this issue, I want every time I restart my instance, service should be started automatically. Then we use check config command. Check config. The HTTPD on. Okay. So that Every time you restart your machine, service will be started automatically. 
Suppose if you don't want this feature to be enabled, then give you off. So these are old commands. In place of this, you can use system CTL commands. System CTL enable HTTPD. If you want, if you don't want this feature, then disable like that. Okay. So that every time you restart your instance, service will be started automatically. Okay. Then coming to redirection. See redirection in the sense, for example, this greater than symbol is right, that we call redirection. Suppose, see, you type any command, okay, m list installed. When I type this command, I'll get big lengthy output. I want to redirect that output to one file called install underscore packages. You can see. After running this command, I'll get some output that I'm redirecting to this particular file, install underscore package. This file will be created and that will be you know, redirected. Now enter, that's it. Do ls, see what is the file? There's a file. Open that file, cat, give that file. You can see big lengthy list. So greater than is a redirection symbol like, you know, echo, hello. This output I'm redirecting to one file called test file. If you do ls, you can see test file is it. Open that file, cat. Okay, that's it. So this is what we call redirection. If you get all greater than, then that will be appended. Suppose if I repeat this command, if I repeat, then, then, whatever new content that will be overridden by existing existing thing will be overridden. If you get double greater than, then that will be added that already. Yeah, if someone asked it, Sai, uh, how to give file names with spaces. Simple guys, very, very easy. Just we give double quotes, okay. Either you can use single quote or double quote, like, you know, I would like to create a file. Generally, we don't give file names. When we give file names, we don't give spaces and all. That is not a good practice here. Even if you want to give big lengthy one, either you give hyphen or underscore, so that it's a continuation by seeing that we can understand that it's, it's a one file. But no, say I want to give space, then you can give double quotes in, for example. Sai file, you can see. So I'm giving that file name in double quotes, even though I'm giving space, you can see. If you don't give in double quotes, then two files will be created. Sai is separate file. File is separate file, like that. But if you get in double quotes, it's only one file. Do ls. How can we verify it is only one file or not? ls hyphen l. What is this? See, only one file only, right? You can see. Correct or not? It's not showing us two different files. It's a one file, like that. For removing also, rm hyphen rf, in double quotes, you have to mention. That is here. Then do ls hyphen you can see file got removed. So if you want to give spaces, you have to put it in double quotes or single quotes. That's up to you. But 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 that is not at all a good practice. Okay, not at all a good practice. Remember that. 